Young creators are burning out and breaking down. I was scrolling on the news the other day when I saw this New York Times article about creator burnout and I didn't realize my friend fucking Waleed was on the front cover. Now I get it. If you scroll past this article, you're like, what the fuck? Influencers have a good life. Stop complaining. That's the way I would think about it. But now that I am a creator and I have friends that are in the creator economy, I can't help but have a bit of empathy for what they're going through. I think for a lot of people that make videos or try to make their own business, making content every day is a tiring act. And a lot of people are getting depressed and burnout out and tons of anxiety from this career path. What does it mean to have a burnout? By definition, burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion, typically through stress. I don't think a lot of people understand that burnout is a real thing regardless of the career path, right? Whether you're a doctor working late shifts or you're a content creator working to 2 a.m. editing a video. I know being a doctor is a more respected field and more important, but the level of burnout that an individual feels is very similar no matter what career you're in. Now, because I'm a creator with a company in the creator economy, when I was reading through this article, I actually found it pretty insightful and relatable because I've felt burnt out before too. But when I read the comments of the article, that was interesting. Let's take a look at it. Tawny Hugh says, get a job. Jaguar Girl says, how about studying for a career or getting a real job? I have no sympathy for them. Hey, why don't you try out real life for a try? Haha, <laughs> clowns. Am I supposed to feel bad for these people? Imagine people wanting to be an influencer. Now, honestly, I get it. Like these comments make sense because most of these influencers lives look pretty damn easy like getting four to five k on a dancing tiktok which is sometimes the brand deals that these creators get is stupid money it is dumb motherfucking money and i am aware that this is a huge privilege and you know it's it's their life is easier in a fantasy so i understand that bubble but i think that that's a one percent of creators there's 50 million creators in working in the creator economy either making content freelancing or making money online truth is the creator economy is not limited to teenage celebrities it's for people freelancing, making websites. It's for that small coffee shop that's using social media to grow their business because COVID killed their direct to sales channel. And I think a lot of these creators would get a real job if getting a real job was easy. A study from Washington EDU says 53% of college graduates are unemployed and it takes three, six months to a year to get their first job. So imagine you have $40,000 in debt and your next real job might be a few months away. You might start a TikTok. You might start a digital career to get things off the ground running. And especially because of COVID, everything is digital. You know, learning how to use social media, making TikToks, making YouTube videos is a great skill in the workforce if you wanna get a job. This is some data that shows that the most impacted businesses are physical retail companies, whereas digital and entertainment careers are thriving in the service-based industry because that's the way we connect online. Like I said, everyone has their right to their own opinion. These are just mine. I think it's just really interesting how the thought about being sad as an influencer is completely invalid and you're not allowed to be upset or you know, depressed if you're a creator. When in reality, not all creators are the Charlie D'Amelios of the world. It's your friend that's working on an Etsy shop that's trying to pay off their student loans. It's for the underrepresented communities that need to show up and make content to solve a lot of our social issues. Now, because people are aware you can make money on social media, I think people are really chasing after this goal. And because of this, it's, it's very stressful and it will lead to burnout. So there is a flaw in the system in terms of how creators make money. I got a chance to interview Jade Dharmawangsa. She's the founder of X8 Media, which is an influencer agency that helps creators monetize. And I want to know her thoughts around what we can do better so digital careers and being an influencer is more sustainable. So I think the biggest problem with creators burning out has more to do with the way monetization is currently structured. You know, for, as a creator, you get money through brand deals, which is really focused on the amount of views you get. And maintaining views on a platform you can't control like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok is extremely stressful. So if we were able to take away brand deals and merge and things that relied on view count and more on the community and ways that to decentralize and diversify, I think it would lead to a lot less mental health issues. So I think the first solution on a monetization level is to diversify income. And I think this is through investing. I think creators should think about not only just getting money to pay their rent and the items, but investing in the future, something that can grow 10%, 100% year after year, and something they can kind of rely on instead of having to look towards paycheck to paycheck or brand deal to brand deal. At Create, we encourage creators to invest in communities. There's this community called FWB, which stands for Friends with Benefits, and people who are in the community that own tokens also get financial gain because one token can be worth X amount of dollars and this amount grows year after year. So it's almost as a creator, if you are investing in communities or other brands that you like, this can help you um, not only keep being invested in what you like to do, but get some financial return. So after diversifying, the second thing that will help mental health, I believe is monetizing 
with your community versus on your community. You know, traditional brand deals are inefficient. And with Web3, check out this video if you wanna know what Web3 is. It's gonna really help creators monetize with their community. So there's two ways to go about this. There's social tokens and there's NFTs. I'm gonna first explain social tokens. So I create, we work with a bunch of creators to launch their own social token project. So think Dogecoin or any currency that you are maybe familiar with, Ethereum, Bitcoin, a creator can do the same. So we're launching a token with Nutshell. So he's creating his own ERC20 token built on Ethereum and he's distributing it to his fans. And what we're doing right now is we're enabling his fans to use his token if you hold it, right? You know, you are able to go to his events, get his merch, Discord, it's access points. So these tokens are holding to to play or to, to engage in this community. But you can also earn it. So if you're working at a nation, you can maybe do an animation or work behind the scenes. But what we're happening is we're creating micro economies. And over time, maybe Nutshell is worth you know nothing, but when people in the community grows, the token value increases and Nutshell has 10 million followers. So we see him growing faster year after year. And this is how you create longevity. And over time, when there's a lot of you know money circulating in this currency, there's something called a community treasury, where a percentage of the token is in a safe, where the community can dictate what to do with this currency in the safe, right? So say there's $100,000 in this community treasury, we can give it to the creator salary, pay some team members and you know, build out an economy with his own currency. So people that work in FWB Whale, which are these crypto communities, are literally getting paid full-time salaries in their own currency. So this is something we're trying to see in Web3 and that I think will be super valuable with the creator economy. The second thing is NFTs, which I made another video all about how creators can monetize NFTs, but I just think it's the future of merch, it's the future of commerce. So NFT stands for non-fungible token. And essentially every time a fan buys an item and resells it, the creator gets a cutback or 10% royalty. And this is great, this is passive income, and like I said, I think the key is to diversify income and enable the creator to go from having to post content to make money to relying and growing with the community. Thank you, Jade, for that interview. Now it comes to the second solution. I think that once we understand the financial model needs to be disrupted, let's talk about easy shit creators can do that I think a lot of you guys that are making content can take away from. And I think it's just at the core, the mindset. I was meditating in Arizona, visiting a friend, and I realized how every minute I was trying to meditate, I couldn't stop thinking about work. I was either thinking about my views, the brand deals I want to create, the bills I have to pay my team, and just all these feelings, and I literally couldn't sit still meditating. It was extremely difficult. I made a video about this before, but my dream job is now becoming super stressful. I love making content, but because I'm always worrying about the future, I am slightly burnt out, and I am slightly really tired, and I, have, <laughs> I can't really poop. So because of this, I realize I am losing the fun out of making content. It's just not fun anymore. It's stressful. And before I would feel really embarrassed to admit that, but at the truth, I'm fucking stressed. What really helped me though, was I was talking to my friend Ishan and Ben and Karen about what I was going through. And they're good friends of mine that are similar in the industry that could give me insight on how to stop worrying. And they told me, Jade, you just need to be present right now for five minutes and try to let things go and not control what you can't control. Literally just talking to my friends about this was a breath of fresh air. I think this is a wake up call to talk about your problems and don't feel guilty about them, especially if you have a friend circle that are creators and understand you. I think that so often we can be very internal with our problems because we feel like we don't deserve to talk about it. When in reality, all mental health is valid no matter you know how big the hole you're in. You're still in a motherfucking hole and you have every right to express your feelings, especially if it's your close friend circle. And I hate asking for help. Y'all, like I came from an only child family where we didn't have a lot of money. So I like to do things on my own, help people and like get shit done without asking for help. But I realized in the moment, in my anxiety, I need to ask for help. So I do recommend to A, talk to your friends about what you're going through and every struggle is worth expressing and your value is neutral. Like everybody in this earth is equal and they have value no matter how rich or poor you are. Second, I think it's really important to, if you're able to seek professional help. I know this sounds like an ad, it's really not. I found a therapist on this website called zencare.co. It's kind of like Airbnb, but for therapists. So it matches you with therapists and you can hop on a call for them for free for 15 minutes to see if you guys vibe. And honestly, you guys, I don't necessarily know where I'd be without this marketplace. I found a great therapist and it was an investment. I'm not used to spending so much money a week on my mental health, but it's just 
Like if you don't have friends or family you can talk to, getting a therapist is going to be life altering. So I encourage you, again, therapy is not limited for people that have huge issues and trauma. Like you could be totally normal and you want someone to talk to and therapy might be great for you. I think in order to make social media fun again and reduce this burnout, it's all about opening up and having these conversations. And I understand why so many creators don't talk about it and stay in their silo of being burnt out because the response from society and people is negative. And I totally understand why it's negative. Like most social media influencers look lucky and you know have rich parents and they look like they have everything, but that's only like maybe 1%. If not, their lives aren't perfect and every emotion is valid. The 98% of the group are regular people that are working jobs, but using social media to you know give them stability when a market's so volatile. So I guess the point of this video is regardless if you are in the top 1% or not, I think your value and your emotions are valid. And you know, there's not really a solution. People can have their thoughts, but I think if you're a creator watching this and you feel guilty for having problems, that is completely false. You don't need to feel guilty. You are have every right to feel what you need to feel. And these are words I need to tell myself whenever I feel stressed that I can't be upset or I'm not allowed to be sad because I have everything and I need to be grateful. But I think that the bigger conversation is regardless of the struggle, you are struggling and we should be more compassionate about that and express how we feel to people we like and trust. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'd love to know your thoughts on how you cope with burnout. Regardless of your career, I'd love to hear from you and know more about what you guys are going through. This is a safe space for creators to talk about their problems. And even if you're not a creator and you want to work in the creator economy, feel free to drop a question and I'll answer it in a next video. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, comment below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.